This is New Eden. An anomaly even within the data break network. Ever since the dawn of aviation, mankind has looked to the skies with hopeful expectation of conquering the stars. Beyond the remnants of the shattered Wood Gate, a universe of impossible splendor lies among an endless sea of stars. These are the sounds of the cosmos. The sounds that echo through every corner of the universe. This is New Eden FM. Hello and welcome to New Eden FM, the radio show, your weekly mix of uh, cool tunes, new and old, to keep you in step on the right foot as you sail the stars of infinity. Uh, DJ Von Bell on the ones and twos, and yours truly, Maestra, in the studio alongside that rowdy troublemaker, Latara. Trouble me. Never. Oh, God damn. <laughs> of course. And uh, how are you today, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I, th- I think I should have warned you before this, uh, before this show. Uh, I think the filter is non-existent today, so... Uh, Does the filter ever exist? This could be fun. There's a filter and it, it, it exists uh, for you? Sometimes. Oh, okay. Sometimes. <laughs> and of course, Alondria of the Galaxy. How are you today, sweetheart? I'm doing good. Uh, at least most of me is. I think a couple of me might still be in bed. I'm not sure. Let me see if I can rouse them. <laughs> oh, jeez, man. I should still be in bed right now. I'm still getting over this cold, but uh, making good headway at least. That's always a good thing. I, I I think it may have transferred via osmosis or something through the internet because I'm feeling it over here. So I don't know what's going on with that, but we'll see if we can figure it out. Might be some new technology we need to exploit and assimilate. <laughs> you would be the one to assimilate it, I guess. <laughs> I just indeed, said that your alliance indeed. is getting bigger by the day from assimilating people. In, indeed. He kind of assimilated uh, Rebel Alliance. Uh, doesn't exist anymore. But no. it, it's, it's very nice. We're, we're very, very happy with that. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Well, I mean, Rebel Alliance got disseminated before you could assimilate anything because uh, they, um, they, well, they chose the wrong, um, the, the wrong hombres to poke. Yeah, this is true, and you can't exactly Photoshop uh, things about major organizations, pass it off to other organizations, expect it to go well. I mean, it doesn't go well when you do it with the two biggest pirate alliances in the game, no. <laughs> but, you that, that, know. That, 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 that's very true. Mm, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Uh, so on today's show, New Eden News, brand new balance patch from out of nowhere, and the second interstellar bazaar of the year. Who would have expected that one? I mean, seriously, I wouldn't. Oh, man, screw you. <laughs> Later in the broadcast, we have the New Eden FM Battle Royal. So get your favorite Yang Young ship and head on out to Tama. Just keep it near the station until we're ready to get started. It's for your own protection, trust me. This is your weekly update on all things in Echoes and in online. New Eden News. So check it. Are we are we getting sound now? Just making some adjustments there. Now kind of viable, and that I think that that's the biggest story because it hasn't been viable since the game dropped two and a half years ago. It's very good for the game. Yeah, yeah, definitely, 100. Uh, so, um, so we have that. They, of course, snuck in another Interstellar Bazaar festival on us, in addition to the balance patch, which, I mean, didn't we have the last one like three months ago, maybe four? I don't know. Uh, so um, six. Yeah. About, about six months ago. Okay, so it was, it was like six months ago. June, wasn't, wasn't it? May, May, or June, thereabouts. 
What name? What was it? April. Um, I know that. Well, I mean, it, it's it's a little bit after April. I do know that those um, it's supposed to be an annual event, but uh, apparently they wanted to uh, they wanted to to do yet another one, and. Of course, this is after we had the Q&A where they basically said that they are not going to be giving us uh, the opportunity to actually earn purple nanocores for our caps in the game because they're quote unquote very expensive. Then they turn around and we get another interstellar bizarre event where they are, guess what, selling another capital core. And uh, they had to revisit the um, how many um, how many cores they are or what kind of cores they are giving because well, let me put it this way. They had to reevaluate how many points it took to get anything because it was way extreme. One of our FCs did the math um, when the event first started a couple of days ago. And uh, if you got really unlucky and you really wanted one of those cores, you're looking at $7,000 US uh, currency. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. It was seven thousand dollars in United States currency, and um, <laughs> and so that works out to anywhere between seven thousand to um, to six point uh, eight thousand or six point eight hundred in um, in our six point eight thousand in um, in British pounds. So, uh, man, I I I. I I mean, I praise them for the balance patch. I think that it's great. Some of these ships did need, in fact, to get uh, adjusted. I'm not quite sure about the drone change as I have not had an opportunity to get out there with any drone ships. And of course, I'm not a carrier pilot myself. Um, but, um, but I mean, I've been told that they are getting a bit nasty. They're just having a hard time keeping up with extremely fast um, frigates. So they are going to be doing another adjustment I don't want to call it a balance because the balance patch is already hit and uh, and now <clears throat> and now you know we, we, we might have something that's a little bit uh, a little bit more viable because those drones have got to be able to hit those um, hit those frigates at least the small ones should be able to catch up with the frigates the on um, the very light fighters need to be able to catch up with the frigates otherwise they're sitting ducks uh, <clears throat> and I'm not saying that because we killed the chimera yesterday <laughs> but um um, but you know, I mean, it, it is what it is. Uh, but a lot of these other changes, I won't go over every single um, thing that was um, that was changed. Uh, some of them included in increasing the um, the remote shield booster repair amounts, uh, the medium shield repair um, boosters, and the large ones by 10%, as well as the capital ones by 10%. Uh, and uh, the uh, small remote capacitor transmitter uh, capacitor need uh, increased by 50%. So there's some pretty good stuff. The armor resistance on the um, on those um, on those armor links uh, have actually gone up. So that's really good. Uh, I don't know if it's enough to compete with shields, but there are definitely people that are number crunching it uh, right now. Meliodas being one of them. Of, um, of course, he is the leader of the um, the Burr Pirate Alliance. And uh, it, I mean, it's just, it's a lot of stuff. It's, um, like I said, people like uh, like Sheev and Benzi uh, do it a little bit better than I do. So I'm not going to go through every single one of those notes, but I encourage you guys to check them out. Uh, because uh, I think that every once in a while the game meta has got to shift. Uh, whether or not uh, I kind of, you know, um, think that now was a good time to just go ahead and shift it. Is, is you know it's debatable right because at this point everyone is super super comfortable with um with with the doctrines that they've created if you ask anyone what the prime what the predominant ship is in their capital police they're going to say it's the Nagalfar. yeah but i, I think the uh, yeah i think the moros pilots are laughing all the way to the top right now though <laughs> what makes you say that but my, my understanding of the way the balance packs did, they, they got really buff. Uh, yeah, and, well, I mean, I mean... Anyone who likes armor on the whole has got to be rubbing their hands together with this patch and thinking, maybe it's our time. 
and I'm one of those people. I mean, dude, <laughs> I I love armor on my Balgorn. I I wanted to fly a rev. You remember how I like how many times I argue with Mel saying, dude dude you know i'm flying a rev i'm flying a rev and he's like no i want all the ships to be like you know naglefars at the time so i ended up having to drop my cannon skills or i'm sorry i dropped my laser skills to go cannons and now it's like dude like <sighs> i mean that's also uh not including the fact that uh, mel just bought a rev man yeah he's an asshole for doing that but <laughs> that's <laughs> <all>. <laughs> He's an asshole for doing that one. Uh, I'm mad at him for that. Um, but anyways, it, it just it just seems like it was so nice to kind of shake things up. And now armor might possibly be a little bit viable. And uh, it's kind of like, okay, so where are all our Lodgy? I think Amy is the only one that I know has like 554 in, uh, in armor, remote armor repair. So like she is the only actual person that I know of in the Alliance. Except for that one or two, you know, every once in a while you get a, you get a, um, you get one of those in your fleet, right? An armor repair pilot. But I mean, they're far and few. Most of them move their points out of armor repair into shield because they lost hope that armor would ever be useful in this game. And now, armor. I mean, <laughs> hit, hit me out. Like, thanks to this patch. There's a na nasty little like cruiser fleet, I think, in Yeoman 2, Ala 2 Guardian, X Cruelty. Like, those nasty little roam fleet that'll punch up way above its weight, like, resistance wise. I mean, how long before we start seeing gangs of Abaddons y YOLOing around with. Uh, Harby, Guardians, and uh, Brutix logic. Like, dude, uh, and that'll be pretty nasty as well. And the thing about it is, Latara, you and we talked about this um, back during the days when we were trying to organize Bell's fleet, how we wanted um, to um, to grab some like armor ships and go and do something fun. And uh, we never really got around to it. Obviously, we did the we did this this the mega merge um, with our friends uh, in Burr before we uh, we got around to doing that. But I mean, like I have like two Apoc strikers, and I was waiting to eat that thing. I mean, I had to shell fit it so that I could go out and get content with it. You know what I mean? And it's like now there is a possibility of being able to be viable in an armor. Uh, in, you know, in an armor config, and again, yeah, I, I mean, I'm a I'm a laser pilot through and through. I absolutely do love um, the you know the different varieties of ships and stuff like that. And now, and you know, and, and it, it'll be useful no, outside of just what I want to do in terms of my personal vendettas. You know, uh, it's 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 all about the railgun, Mackenzie. The um, railgun master race no the lasers are the master race right now because of the crystals <laughs> i'm sorry to tell Solve you the matter it's rail guns and rail guns only that's nah, all i'm interested in nah the matter is definitely a nice buff it is definitely I mean, you, you got a nice buff right now but i don't think you're, you're putting out laser damage though i'm sorry <laughs> i don't care about laser damage when i outrange you uh i don't think <laughs> are you sure you're outranging me been killing laser ships uh, for a while, uh, arranging them. One v one at the sun. <laughs> it's on. I'll bring a megatron. Ah, uh, look at this. All right, cool. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I I do think that it's kind of cool. And yeah, the rail guns did get um, they did get a um, they did get a nice little buff out of that whole thing. Uh, I believe that the lasers got a minor buff. Uh, it was on ten percent. Uh, increase to the um, to the beam lasers. If I'm not mistaken. I don't think that pulse got um, got one this time, but uh, you know why not? Uh, I think that the big one for carrier pilots who are using the um, what was the bombard uh, implant is that now they don't have to return the, um, the the fighters back to the bay in order to uh, restock them. They do less damage, but at least now you know you have something that you can activate while they're deployed. So it makes it a lot easier for yeah, the carrier pilots. At least the same with drones as well that yep. that implants the same for fighters and drones yep so um it was i mean it wasn't like uh it wasn't a stupid mechanic it makes sense when you think about the way that actual aircraft carriers work in real life 
um, once the, sh the, the planes have deployed their, um, you know, their rockets or their torpedoes, they do have to come back to the carrier inevitably in order to, you know, to, to get a new, uh, to get a new, um, a new torpedo. Um, it's always been that way. However, in a game like this, it, it doesn't make as much sense. And it's a loss in DPS. You know what I mean? Despite the fact that you're doing 300% more damage um, when they're bombarding, I mean, after, you know, if you have to spend the time to get those, those, those drones and those fighters back into the base so that you can re-equip them so that you can redeploy them, it, it is a pain, dude. And it's a net loss in DPS when you really think about it. Um, so a lot of people use them just for the, um, the speed bonus, uh, and for the raw damage bonus, like past hitter that there are EWAR fighters and EWAR drones in EVE Online and it's not that hard to put them into the game. Like, I feel like it's a waste of an implant. There are actual EWAR drones and, you know, and like literally it feels like they're not in the game because, you know, Net wanted to sell the implants. Yeah, possible. I mean, so much of the implants uh, do take the place of uh, what ammo does in EVE Online as far yeah. as I'm aware. Like, the, the one of them uh, the missile one where you can basically switch between damage types or there's a railgun one that does the same sort of thing uh one of the railgun ones increases your range uh, or your um armor resistance and like things like that like yeah i like the extra uh sort of complexity i mean i, I i'm very fond of my railgun implants i've got both yeah, of course. And they're, they're both really good at slightly different situations. Mm, yeah, that's a very good, tr um, that's a very good fact. Uh, and, uh, by the way, have you tried out these new, um, the new, um, anti-drone pulse bombs? Like, I, I saw that they, those were released, but I haven't seen anyone actually using them yet. Because, once again, Nettie's... Yeah, yeah, once again, Nettie's has um, locked those behind the loyalty store, meaning that they are ridiculously overpriced right now. Uh, at least How much they're not... They're like 600 million, right? <sighs> it, Mark 7s were about 400 mil when I looked. The Mark 9s yeah. were 900 mil. And all of the new drones are sitting at around about 400 million each for the uh, mediums i haven't looked too, too much at the large or smalls <laughs> oh my goodness i mean at least I, I i can put it this way at least they're hidden behind the loyalty point store and they're not hidden behind say for example the um the the, the well event like the cyber x event i mean <laughs> honestly surprised there wasn't a box you could buy in the store for oh my the gosh. Uh, that had like a, a selection of blueprints in them, for example, yeah. like they did for implants and um, that and nano some nano core stuff. Oh no, please! Uh, I, I, you know, it, it's like whatever happened to people just wanting to, you know, play the game and earn stuff. Like you know, the good old days when you'd spend uh, fifteen bucks a month on an MMO, and the only thing that was being sold on the store was like very small, like bonus items and uh, and like clothing and other customization items, or if you wanted uh, a really cool mount or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, we're older now. We don't have time. <laughs> yeah, everybody just throws money at it and says the problem is gonna go away. <laughs> I'm gonna make the problem like... go away. It's like my wife say, it's either throw money at it or put like four, like four or five hours a day. Now we're like, yeah, put money to it. Okay. But I mean, when you think about it, it it's kind of true. Like, yeah. um, I yeah. can go out to a gig and, you know, and, and even right now make anywhere between, you know, like uh, 25, 45 bucks an hour, uh, depending on the gig in this area. And so if someone says, well, you know, you can grind for this thing for like six hours, right? or you can just drop 40 bucks it's like well the math is that i i can save four hours by giving these people 40 you know 40 bucks and moving on but at the same time you know like what are we really trading that for you know what i mean it's just it's it just yeah it, it's okay but i guess depending on what kind of gamer you are um it it, it kind of hurts a little bit just my personal opinion
Yeah, I, think, I, I don't think you should throw money at games just to have fun. <laughs> just play the game, right? You should right? throw it, like, yeah, yeah, just, if you enjoy the game and you have fun, then you should put some money into it to show the developers that it's a good <laughs> game. But you shouldn't, like, feel, oh man, I can't play this game, it's boring, or any other reason, and be like, yeah, maybe if I put money, maybe it's fun. That's the wrong way. Yeah, I completely agree. agree with you. Uh, if you're putting more and more money into the game so you can try to get more fun out of it, I mean, the, the, what, what I found um, about spending money in a game is that when you spend money, what you're actually doing is you are trying to enhance what is already a good play experience. Like when I'm in EVE Online, I, uh, I now the game isn't perfect, mind you. There are still some things that they need to, you know, probably do a little bit better of a job balancing. But they just finished doing a balance patch, and for the most part, it was widely accepted by the community. Now over there, you can buy Plex, which you can turn into ISK if you want to. But you can also buy Plex and then turn it into something like outfits or whatever. And so my main over in EO and even my secondary clone, they're both decked out in outfits that you can only get off of the store. But the reason why is because I love the customization in EO. And so what I'm buying those clothing items for is to basically enhance what is already a good playing experience. Uh, if I wasn't having fun with EO, a new, you know, putting my uh, my alt into a lab coat is not going to make me feel, you know, like I want to play EO. It's just, no, the clone looks better, but I don't, I don't particularly, I still don't like industry, right? But if I like industry, I enjoy what I'm doing. I enjoy having that life as a science, you know, a science geek and playing the game. Well, I'm playing the game and this just enhances the experience that I'm already enjoying in the game. And if you take away the coat, well, guess what? I am, um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's still the same game, right? I'm still enjoying it. My character just doesn't look as good. <laughs> yeah. You can, you're kind of paying for an, an enhanced immersion, I guess. Yeah, but don't, I, I'm don't the do same. that. I'm the same fighter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't do it. I'm paying for looking cool in space when no one see me because no one is looking close at. I mean, at fights. But, technically but I do, speaking, so. <laughs> I uh, I mean, you did win. I think second place in the uh, costume contest we did in October for that really cool Celtic um, Dami that you had. So yeah, yeah people are actually True. looking True. at it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, yeah. Okay. It's the same on my on my skin competitions. People yeah. win stuff, so. They yeah. make money by making nice ships. Exactly. And and that's the whole thing. I mean, no one wants to cruise around in something really ugly, right? I still have uh, a bunch of well-designed Armageddons that I uh, I haven't really been uh, flying around in. And of course, there is a skin that Latar gave me for my um, for my um, my Apex Striker, which I, I pimped out. Like once once I had that ship and I had a nanocore for it. Oh my gosh, the things I did with it. But um. <laughs> It was, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, and, um, and you know, I was enjoying the ship, right? The skin didn't help me to enjoy the ship anymore. It just made sure that I looked really good while I was flying it. Um, the weekly developer Q&A. And uh, as you were saying before we came back, Ashif, uh, this is a really interesting Q&A on this week. Um, yeah, the, I think so. Yeah. Uh, the first question is, uh, hello EE team, I love the game and want to make it better. This is my suggestion, when we are reverse engineering something expensive like a Nestor, can we get up to a point but never 100%? Um, in a, the long run, it is balanced but a single failure costs much more than one RNG try. I would like to see you add a mechanic that can make a boost for us up to 100% and or something to return some of the resources back. Let's say we need to use new resources, um, region specific, like in Angel Space to get the resources uh, used for the uh, Angel reverse engineering ships, etc. This will make the regions attractive um, for more ways, invest more in resource for more secure RE return and something to mine, explore, fight for to sell on the market so players in other regions can buy it. Thanks in advance. That's actually not a bad suggestion. Um, a lot of games are moving into this, um, what is called uh, the pity roll. Like if, say for example, in like Azure Lane, which is uh, another, it's another game that I enjoy playing. 
If you are rolling for like a super rare ship that can only be gotten through the uh, loot boxes, if you roll like 300 times and you still don't have that ship, it will give you that ship guaranteed. Um, rewarding people for, you know, for being really unlucky, but knowing that even if you roll like 300 times and you don't get it, you know, you'll still, you, you will, you will inevitably get what you're looking for, right? It's not going to be just like every time you roll it, it's, uh, you know, you, you, you go back to that same base, um, 0.5% chance that you're going to get that, that particular item. The answer that they gave was in our current future vision for reverse engineering, there are plans to add more decryptors, uh, and structure bonuses to further improve the success rate. However, at this moment, um, that figure is unlikely to rise to 100% because it makes it hard to control the final balance. Please understand, we will continue to observe the feedback of reverse engineering. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's not really a bad answer, but it wasn't particularly a good one either. No, but but we can't have 100%, <clears throat> but I, I do agree we should have it more, like higher percent. Um, and and I, I think to make it have more percent chance to, to not be failing, we should put more more materials into it because we need to to uh, use up the material materials that we have in Evacos. I agree with you. Um, we need to so they're give talking them more about worth. It. I mean, the materials. Let's be yeah. honest; they're they're not worth that much. Um, and it's really because no. uh, everything is an isk sink, and and you know nothing really drives up the price of materials. Uh, and it, it really didn't improve when we got the Roracle and the uh, and the Orca. It just more minerals were being put into the game into the market and there was nothing there's nothing really consuming a lot of these now people have to build like jump bridges and stuff like that and I guess that's consuming some of the materials um but I mean you know material shortages aren't as bad as as like say for example in EO where you have to grind for um you're grinding for this stuff and um ultimately you're ending up um you know, you're you're ending up um, you're ending up spending more time trying to get materials, less time trying to produce the isk, and so it feels like after you built something like a Titan, like you know, it took you two weeks maximum or minimum to build that thing. Sometimes three weeks, and so you can be proud of saying, yeah, you know, we collected the resources, we did this, we did that. I mean, when I um, when I talked to one of the um, the recruiters in Pandemic Horde. And I told them, I mean, in this game, I have like a full industry clone and all she does is, is sit in, you know, sit in, in the um, in the station, do reverse engineering, do, you know, um, building and stuff like that. And they were like, oh, man, that clone would be so helpful here because they burn through so many ships. Granted, we don't have the insurance system like the way that it is here over there. People just lose ships and they have to buy new ships off the market. But I mean, I mean, think about saying, well, I have an industry clone and she's 100% industry and you are trying to join one of the major like warring factions like Burr or like no you know or like SHH it's kind of a toss of whether they will take you because you know at least in our organization we want people like even our industry people have to they always get the same answer and I've seen it on reddit um, well you know you've, you've got to do more than just be pure industry if you want to survive out here in Nullsack, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it just kind of that that kind of gets to me a little bit. I think that industry needs to be a little bit more viable. Hopefully, though, they'll be uh, readdressing industry a little bit more. The uh, the second question was allow market transactions in the wallet to show what item was bought or sold. And uh, the answer to this is we will try to add order records to market transactions in the future. Uh, actually, we have a plan to add order records function to allow pilots uh, to uh, to check their previous market transactions. We believe such a re uh, such a record is beneficial to improving the experience of trading in the market. However, this function is still under discussion, and we can't commit to a launch date at this time. Um, I. Uh, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but I still believe that the reason why we don't have actual market data like we do in EO is because they want to control the market. And not having actual market numbers for us to look at and be able to say, well, you know, this is how what the trend of this item was and what it is now allows them to freely manipulate things as they see fit under the hood. So, and they are. 
Yeah. There's uh -huh. plenty of evidence for that. Yeah. But, uh, like a refund of 150,000 packs. It's insane. It's, it's like that's really a insane. refund. <coughs> it's yeah, it's insane. Crazy. It's absolutely insane. Um, but you know, I mean, they're they're doing some really interesting things. I I, I feel like I feel like you know the whale events are are getting a little bit uh, going a little bit overboard. Um, but um, uh, you know, uh, as long as we get some stuff to do, I don't care. Yeah, I guess so. I, I guess get those ships ready and get them out to Tama because when um, when we come back from this little music break, we're gonna have ourselves a good old battle royal and. Um, Again, guys, you must be in either the can you or what's the destroyer called again? Because I mean, we use them. Yeah, and you. Yeah, there you go. You must be in those ships in order to participate in this battle royal. We're gonna have ourselves a good old slugfest at the sun. And we are back, and uh, it is about time for us to get the uh, the battle royal uh, off of the um, off the ground. So wait. Wait, we're, we never were on the ground. Okay, uh, so uh, Alondria, can you hold on? I'm going to drop this old fleet so that you can in invite me to this fleet. And um, uh, yeah, try try not to like you know, don't shoot me because I'm just here to uh, to announce the uh, to announce the the events. So keep talking. Stall for two minutes, please. <laughs> I don't need to stall for two minutes. I'm just gonna warp to Alondria. I'm gonna just warp to a laundry in my go. little egg. <laughs> there we go. I don't now, need to we, stall for two we minutes. Can, nah. We can, of course, right. go over the rules here now. The first one that we're going to do, of course, is going to be the Zan Yu. It's mm -hmm. going to be our destroyer class. Now, first prize on this battle is going to be a Cinnable, with the second prize being a Succubus. Now, the rules for this are very, very simple. Do not shoot the ref. That would be myself and the kins. Shooting a ref is instantly disqualifying. Do not pod a competitor after you kill them. Podding a competitor is instant disqualification. Let people be ready to reship into the next fight, please. Those are the rules. It's very, very, very simple. Other than that, have fun. That's the word of the day. <laughs> this is going to be interesting, though. All right. I was I was getting ready for this event, and I realized like I've moved through enough like alliances and like lived in all different parts of New Eden that I have lost my can use. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Uh, like, uh... I. I have no idea where they've gone. <laughs> hey, look, at least you are, uh, you're, you're still not as bad as my, uh, my ex-CEO in, um, in EVE Online. The guy literally came onto comms one day and said, guys, I can't find my roll recall. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How do you, how do you lose one of those? I mean, I would think that that would be one of the hardest things to actually lose. I, oh. I can't imagine misplacing yeah. that. You, you, that's just like, like remember where I parked? I, I, that's one of those things you would think you would remember. I mean, you no. At first, when he came in, I thought he said Oracle. I'm like, I mean, just buy a new one. It's like, no, no. I rep I misplaced my my Oracle. I'm like, oh. And I mean, yeah, I, and, yeah. and then I turned yeah. around like a few months down the road because we have been moving so much during the last war and I couldn't find my Nagle farm. <laughs> oh, my oh, goodness. I couldn't remember where I left How did it. you lose something? I couldn't remember How where I left it. one of them? Those, I couldn't those remember are, where I left it. Those are kind of important. Now, now granted, I mean, if you're in, in silent, I can understand how you could lose Oracle, because I think they lost another one last night. Oh, but man. you know, that's, that's that's like losing it, losing it, not misplacing it. So I think that's a little different. Yep, yep. So I think that um, with the rules explained, and uh, and yes, I know where my Nagalfar is, by the way. Uh, I think that we can wait, we can get this. Can... What? Wait. What? A second. Can, can you invite uh, the the blue can uh, Chan Yu to fleet? Uh, yeah, he's not here yet. Yeah, he's here now. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's another <laughs> Zan Yu. Love it. All right. Hunter's Moon. There Target we go. number one. 
<laughs> All right. But we've already worked out who has a nano core, so that person has to die first. <sighs> yeah, oh my! We slaughter everyone. Oh my! There gosh. you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now this is going to be some fun. What we're going to do is we're we're going to be warping just the the destroyer squad here, and uh, <laughs> when we do, when we land. That's whenever the fight's going to start. Please do not leave fleet, because we will be judging based on the order of the kill mills appearing in the chat. Yep. And if you don't have that uh, option turned on, you can go ahead and turn it on in uh, in the settings at the moment. It should be under the mistaken battle settings. Um, That's right. Yep. I believe so. Are the suggestions ready? Oh, he's just... Yes. Oh, oh. Topo it's, has declared it is just a skin. It is not a nanocore. Please don't kill me, is what that says to me. <laughs> oh, right. Let's. <laughs> yeah, you're not it's, just me, just uh -huh. it's just a skin, guys. It's just a skin, I swear. Okay. There okay. you go. All right. Here we go, everybody. In three, two, one. Hold on. I just realized I was about to just warp myself. Hold on. We will. We're going to try this again. Fail FC. In three, two, <laughs> one. <laughs> Go. Go. Mm. Yep. All right. The pot's going to land on grid first, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hold on. Eh. Uh, as a side note, a a a Cinnable warps at the same speed as a Zan Yu. How about that? How about that? Okay, I just landed, and uh, the first competitors are landing right now. Oh, here we go. This should be very interesting. And I see Tofo. Uh, he is getting um, he's getting some. It looks like he's pulling range. Wow, that that's an interesting choice. Uh, but um, all right, I see you, Tofo. Warp drive active. Looks like, looks like the tar is not going to give very much, uh, I mean, it's going to give Tofu any time to breathe over there. I mean, that, that looks like a pretty focused assault right there. And on the other side of things, you've got the other Tofu um, fighting uh, with uh, Sheev Palpatine. So uh, Sheev, a part of the action on today, and see a ship explode yet. This is, um, this is truly uh, groundbreaking. Warp drive active. Oh man. Uh, yep, there it goes. Looks there goes like the we first. We just lost one. one. Yeah. Yep. There goes the first. Alright. The first Tofo just went down. Dude, this All is right. hard. <laughs> Alright, looks like Latar is still in it with um with their two characters. Right there. Alright, they're gonna one. She's still oh, in there. Oh. Uh, looks like Black Joker is coming in. Um, he's going to so get a little bit of a, um, get a closer look at what's going on here. Which is fine, as long as you don't attack any of the competitors. Um, okay. Looks like, looks like Latara just went down in that moment. Manga kill deserves another, so, uh, it looks like yeah, Sheev kills Tofo and um, Tofo kills uh, Hunter's Moon. That is Latara. Which is really Oh, cool. there goes Latara. <laughs> oh, Latara so is, it is disqualified. A, look, oh, it looks like looks like it is a battle for who's going to win now. We're down to Sheev and down to Tofo Nofo. Mm -hmm. I believe it is a Cinnabal, isn't it? Yes, it's yes. Leading for a Cinnabal. Perfect, I just gave one away. <laughs> Get it back. You better win this. Come on, Tofo, you got this. <laughs> yeah, he got this. 
Oh. 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 <laughs> so All for, right. Okay, so, so she won. We have, she, Palpatine, you have yeah. won yourself a Cinnable and Tofo Nofo, you have won yourself a Succubus. Congratulations to you both. Yeah, guys, Thank awesome. You. And by the way, um, <clears throat> Tofo, I believe that that is the Succubus is still a uh, bird doctrine ship. So, um, so good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was that 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 Shanyu Tofo has hit like a truck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was really cool to watch. It. it was really cool to watch. Shoot me, Lotara. What's that? Oh, I I, I, I went all in on Tofo because I know he's got yeah, five five yeah. four. Yeah, he hit me too. Yeah, he hit me too. I felt this. All right, we're gonna get you guys all docked up at the uh, at the station and into your can you for round two of uh, the battle royale. Man. I saw the black joker was here's hoping that he's uh, he's competing today. Oh yeah. I mean I think that's why he's he's in his hand in here, so it was definitely fun to watch that though. to compete with my mighty Ibis. <laughs> Get focus fired off the grid first. <laughs> Ibis are good. The Ibis. <laughs> Round started and unfortunately I think only Joker and um and Chieft actually have can you. So um guess Can you believe it? Can you believe it? <laughs> It's okay. The next time we do a battle royal, we've we've agreed that we're going to uh, to do it with ships that you guys can get easily on the market. Um, that way, it's you know it's a little bit more. Uh, it'll be a little bit more fair. Uh, so um, you know, expect that somewhere around uh, maybe Christmas when we're starting to uh, to do more events and stuff like that. All right, guys, uh, Alondria, when you are ready to uh, to take us out to the um, the planet, our sun, or whatever, um, we're gonna have ourselves a good old fashioned showdown to see. Who is going to be uh, who's going to be getting Duo Omega and who is going to be getting ourselves uh, getting themselves a succubus, I believe. That's right. Uh, same rules, of course, do apply. Please do not shoot the refs. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, still don't pod the other contestant. It's just so that will be uh, both things would disqualify you. So you would get no prize. So uh, please don't do it. Uh, whenever we are ready here, we're going to to uh, be warped planet here. I will make sure that I'm selecting appropriate command time first. All right. We are ready. So we're going Fleet to warp, warp in three, two, one. Here we go. Warp drive active. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I think we need some ambience. Amy we're under ambience attack. We're doing this.
looking at the uh, the damage, it looks like she's either got battle cruiser skills or has fit a lot of resistance in his tank. And uh, I mean, we'll see if the uh, Black Joker hits armor if he's decided to unconventionally go for an armor tank on his gun. You never know. Or maybe he went uh, DPS. Looking to me like she has a large shield boost fit, so uh, let's see if that hurts his cap going uh, going into the second half of this fight. Armor damage. Jesus, it is looking really good right now. Oh boy, Joker is involved. Best way to fly with holes in your ship. that over to you as soon as that insurance timer is. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. yeah, well, I mean, odds are they're going to get the ships long before they get the dual Omega, simply because, I mean, Netties does take a while to distribute those. Uh, so I know that um, they, number one, they don't send messages, they just do it after like a week and something. Just one thing, um, since I won, you know, the, the skin competition you guys had, uh, I did win the dual Omega back then, so... I would like to give away my dual mega this time, just not to get you in some trouble for giving the same guy a duo dual mega twice. So I would, yeah, I would like to give my dual mega to Black Joker. Of course, uh, very sporting. I can take this oh, right. Very sporting. Very oh, sporting. Oh right. Of course. Very sporting. All right. Cool. So, um, so Joker, um, if if you can hear me, because I'm not really sure if you're listening here or if you're listening somewhere else, uh, send me a. Uh, a screenshot of your character card. I really just need your name and ID uh, on it and uh, we'll get you sorted so that you can get the um, we can get the dual Omega for you. It does take a little bit of time like it's not an immediate thing for NetEase uh, so uh, just be looking on the lookout for it um, within a few days or so uh, and of course you can send it to me if you want to, uh, if you want it on an alt you can send your alt card if you want it on your main you can send it on your mains card but um yeah i mean next time we do this we are going to make it a little bit more open so people can come out here with um with other ships i know that not everyone has can use uh still lying around um Fleet it's unfortunate move. but um warp drive place. active But I do believe that that, uh, that pretty much concludes this week's episode of New Eden FM. And uh, we did pretty good on, in terms of time. Lots of time for my friends in Brethren Court to make it over to, um, to um, things that we have to do uh, in about five minutes. So, um, Is yeah. that also along with the, uh, with the stuff? You have the stuff, stuff and the things. We have things and stuff. In the to place, do, you know. Yeah, we have stuff. In the place. Things. In the place, and, yeah. Uh, uh huh. Yeah. In the play. Mm hmm. Oh, yep. Right. Yep. All I can do uh, is cap you capital you move up. If anyone's wondering, uh, we're moving <laughs> them all to Gita. We're selling them. Uh, Mel decided after the balance update, we just need to go armor tank frigates, and we can win the game. Yeah, I mean it's a solid plan. I, well, I don't agree yeah, with it, but I'm, it's okay. I'm, 
I, I, I'm very impressed by that plan, simply by the fact that if you can figure out how to get a capital ship into Jita, you've already mm. won the You've game. already won the so, game, just like You that. know? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, love, hugs, and kisses, and thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week for New Eden FM. And by the way, guys, you know this 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 went off with, with a bang? You know that this is our 50th episode of New Eden FM? Like, not Pantheon Radio or anything, just New Eden FM. It's awesome. 50? Oh, hey, 50? That's great. Yeah. 50, that's yeah. That's many. Five, uh -huh. zero. 50. This was the 50th one, All yeah. Right. I mean, we, not, we don't, like, uh, attach numbers to them most of the time. I mean, I do when I post them on SoundCloud so people can find them for reference. But yeah, this is this is number fifty for us. So um, thanks to all of you guys who participated on today. I mean, I, I, I have a question for you, Kenzie. Mm. Yeah. I have a question for you, Kenzie. Make it fast. Have we done fifty of these and you haven't fired me yet? Uh, technically, uh, this isn't your fiftieth episode as a host. So, um, <laughs> so I mean. Yeah. You We've got some room to get that firing in before your uh -huh. 50th episode. Yep. All right. Yeah, it's definitely 50 for me, though, because, I mean, I've been here since, like, day one doing this whole thing. So, I, I've been to... Uh-huh, yeah. So I guess we, um, we're, we're just waiting until you hit number 50. We're going to fire you at 49 and make it uh, truly dramatic. Yeah. It's going to be like... <laughs> the episode is going to be Latara. Congratulations, you've reached your 49th episode. We want we want to thank you for your service. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just be, the rest uh, of y'all, we will see you for the next episode. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> be, be so terrible. Sit down, and it'll just oh, be God. Latara, and I'll be like, "It's okay, I'll see, I'll see myself out." <laughs> oh, All right, guys. Uh, love, hugs, and kisses, of course, uh, on behalf of Alondria, Boop, and Local. There you go. I've done it for you. Boop and Local. I am. I'm, well, I know. I'm. I'm. Congrat I'm contractually obligated as a hidden CEO of Boop to I'm Boop and to Local, save you. and and to to tell everybody to Boop and Local. But no, my contractual obligation can't get me out of I think you have other contractual, contractual obligation. obligations now that you're an alliance leader somewhere else, unless you're trying to be like Dracus. Well, well that doesn't. Well, oh, oh my! Uh -huh, I didn't yeah. even think about that. What a conundrum, um, right? Well, no, uh, okay. yeah, no, no. Uh, <laughs> what a conundrum! But here's here's the thing. This is why I'm a. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and. Um, that okay. Yeah. That okay. is is the protection. Secrets out. In the mix, this is uh, in the right. End, Nobody knows Lincoln which one. Park. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, turn it up, people. <laughs>